welcome. Oh, hang on, let me fix that green screen issue. Uh, there we go. There we go. Last week, um, the Outer Wilds DLC um, Murder on Eridanos released, and here we are, we're playing it. Uh, I just kept this up because I am very forgetful today. Uh, I have gained ac access to Stellar Bay Landing Pad. I need to go talk to Ada. Okay, I can probably remember that. Uh, so I haven't played this in, what, four months? Something like that? Let me check real quick. Um, Um, October, September, October, um, is when the DLC, the first DLC released, so that's, five months. Um, I don't know much about the DLC, um, other than it's called Murder on Eridanos. But here we are. Uh, close. I think I'm level 30, right? Oh, blue. Blue, sorry. Blue. I keep forgetting. Um, that sounds like a good save file. This is on the PS4, in case you're curious about the load times. I decided against um, downloading and transferring and all the things to the PS5. So we're going to have to live with the longer load, load times. We are... Ah, we just left the manor. And I'm level 33. And my upcoming quest is... Beat the game. Okay, well let's go talk to Ada. I'm pretty sure this is where I left off the last time I streamed. And I should probably do something with the skill points, but you're going to have to accept that it's going to blink for a little bit. And it's been a while, so I'm going to be confused about the buttons for a little bit. I should probably have prepped a little, but I didn't. I did not because I was distracted and tired and had other things to do. Um, okay, hang on, let me just get comfy.
Mm -hmm. Okay, talk to Ada. Impeccable timing, Captain. I was about to watch the latest episode in House of Helen's thrilling serial adventure. Oh? Do tell me. Welcome more. back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? You mentioned an ether wave drama? I'd like to see it. Certainly, Captain. I was hoping you would ask. Oh. Halcyon Helen versus the Brain Eaters, Chapter 12. It was the law for sick in Paris. I had become obsessed. A okay. quest to stop them. To avenge my partner, Philip. And my ex-partner, Bernice. And yeah. Lieutenant Jurgen. And those two informants had brought me to Rizzo's distillery. But it wasn't just the triple distilled deliciousness of Rizzo's Spectrum brand vodka that I found there. Rizzo's real in this universe, right? It was death. I made sure the brain eaters paid the price. But at what cost to me? Uh oh. Now that's a gun. Oh, it wasn't it's actually here. black and white. This is the Halcyon News Network with breaking news. Halcyon Helen has been murdered. Oh. Administrator Ludovico of Rizzo's refused to answer the big question on everyone's mind. Who will Spectrum Vodka's next spokesperson be? Claiming that a special investigation must be concluded first. Oh dear. Captain, we have a communication coming in from one Administrator Ludovico. Get off the transmission, Cedric. We agreed to let me do the negotiating. Law be with you, friend. I am Administrator Ludovico of the famed Eridanos Atmospheric Complex. But there's no need to stand on formality. You may address me as Mr. Ah, let me guess. This is about Hal Halcyon Helen's murder. Her death is the tragedy of our lifetime. As the face of our new product line, her murder is a stain on the Rizzo's brand. She was scheduled to unveil our newest product, Spectrum Brown, before this tragic event. But we cannot move forward with our unveiling until we apprehend the killer. I'm not sure I want a vodka called Brown. At least I'm assuming it's vodka since the other one is. Okay. And your thir first thought was to come to me. All right, Ludovico, that's enough. You don't know oh, what you're hi. doing. Let me handle this. How Captain you doing? Hawthorne, Sublight's favorite freelancer. I'm such an admirer of your work. Cedric Kincannon, Sublight Underground. I'm so glad we're hiring a third-party investigator. No one wants to see a troop of UDL guards stomping all over my hotel. Least of all me. The murder of Halcyon Helen is a heinous assault on this colony. I look forward to watching you find the miscreant responsible and drag them out of the shadows. Miscreant? Um... I was shaken by the news myself. Helen brought a lot of joy to this colony. You're a compassionate person, Captain. And you're right. Halcyon Helen was a talented woman. She had a gift for transforming her art into wealth. You would not believe the money she made us on dissident busters. For law's sake, Cedric, 
Could you show a little discretion and not bring up your contraband operations in front of an outsider? Please, Lou. Sublight Underground is built on discretion. I'm establishing rapport with our new contractor. Let's not give her the impression that you can't be trusted. Do you really want to do this right now, Cedric? You want to antagonize me while I'm negotiating a contract. Because I promise you, I'll win. Let them argue. We can do this anytime you want. I'll even make an appointment. I'm sure your schedule's wide open. What with your product launch being indefinitely delayed due to unforeseen murder. All right, Cedric. If that's how you want to behave, I have no choice but to file an official reprimand on your permanent record. I'm not yawning. Oh, please do. Yawning. I'd love an official reprimand from a failed executive. Could you do me a favor and have it laminated? Could we please stop this nonsense? Captain, I'm Constable Maria Keene. Hiring a third-party investigator was my idea. I've been studying your dossier. You're a talented diplomat. You know how to ask questions, and you have a gift for getting answers without resorting to violence. As far as I'm concerned, you're the ideal inspector for this case. Um, I'm not sure I should introduce myself as Alexandra Swede. Uh, they think I'm Hawthorne. Just how many people are involved in this communication? I mean, it's already a four-way. Just the three of us. Yes, I did say that. Just the three, no one else is going to jump in here unexpectedly. You must excuse us. The situation on Eridanos is tense. If we don't bring Helen's killer to justice, this scandal could scupper our entire operation. Please, Captain. I'm asking you to help us. While you're pursuing your investigation, we'll make you a guest of honor at the Grand Colonial. Um... You can count on me, sure. The future of our complex may depend on your success. I'll leave you in the constable's care. Mr. Kincannon and I must have a word. Fine. Bud Rizzo's is paying for that hotel room. I can't tell you how grateful I am for your help. And even though they may not show their gratitude, I know Administrator Ludovico and Mr. Kincannon appreciate your involvement. Mr. Kincannon could lose his spaceport if board authorities took over the investigation. And if Rizzo's is forced to cancel its unveiling, we might never recover. Um... Helen must have been pretty popular if her death could put an end to your operations. Helen was more than popular. She gave something to this colony that no product line could ever provide. Real happiness. No one has ever been as well known or as well loved. Uh, outside of our courageous business leaders. I swear I'm not yawning. You're seeing things. You seem competent. You could have dealt with us. I represent the law, Captain. But what's happening between Mr. Kincannon and the administrator is... politics. Politics are not my area of expertise. The law is simple. Politics are complicated. Relax. There's nothing I can't handle. I'm pleased to hear that. From everything I've heard, you're a competent freelancer. And, at the risk of sounding impertinent, we desperately need the help of someone competent. Thank you for your time, Captain. Whenever you're ready, I've authorized the Unreliable to land at the Grand Colonial. Alright, I've got everything I need. Transmission terminated. Captain, we are now clear to Trophy land at the, the Mysteries of Complex. Uh, I don't know why they're trusting me to catch Halsey on Helen's killer. There are several reasons why someone would hire your services. In descending order of likelihood, they are as follows. Desperation, confusion, mistaken identity, inebriation, and genuine faith in your abilities. What can you tell me about Eridanos? 
Eridanos is a hydrogen helium gas giant, distinguished by a well-defined ring system. The Eridanos atmospheric complex is a system of land masses propelled through a thin layer of the upper atmosphere, where humans are potentially capable of surviving. Potentially? Thanks, Ada. So I don't remember which ending we got on here. Oh, compromise. Nice. Okay. And there we go. Yes. Aridana, recently famous for Halcyon Helen's death. How exciting. Yes. Very. Okay, I am probably borderline encumbered. So I'm gonna go deal with that just real quick before we keep going. Aww. <laughs> oh, that's those, right. Um. Yeah, 334 out of 350. Do I have any? No. Uh, those were leave. I don't use these at all, so let's dump those. Um. Why am I carrying a million outfits? Okay, well let's dump everything except one I'm wearing. I guess. At least I hope I'm not naked after this. That would be awkward. Uh, let's just go check. I am not naked. Good. I'm not sure why I'm wearing that. But sure. Um... Last items don't count towards weight. Okay. So let's just dump all the other weapons I'm carrying. I do not need a million weapons. There. I'm not sure why that's sitting there, but sure. Huh. Okay. So I should up my scan. Oh, hack, sorry.
Okay. Whoops. Uh, now the question is, who do we bring? I think I'm gonna keep going with Felix and Yoka. I like them. <sighs> My green screen isn't super happy today either. If it wasn't for the fact that I had to clean the, you know, bits behind me, like, that entire area, I would just not bother with the green screen. But then I'd have to never have shit all over my couch. Not actual shit, just like junk. <clears throat> a new loading screen. Oh. Well. This is something. Okay. I got almost 32,000 XP just for landing. You know, we don't have to catch Helen's killer right this second. Maybe we ought to take in the sights. Honey, get on the platform, Felix. Hi, Felix. Can, can you come over here, please? On, thank you. The Grand Con Colonial. I was about to say Continental because hello, I can't Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight salvage and shipping underground, or slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. Uh, can you fill me in on the details of the murder? I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling's been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. Black hey, Hole Birdie. Black Hole Birdie may be a savage brute on the field of honor, but he's no killer. He did it. It's always the boyfriend. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Right, Felix is a movie buff, I forgot. Was she a divisive figure? Not particularly. But I think some folks were jealous of her success, or otherwise viewed her as a threat. Reckon how she came about her fame didn't help. How'd she get so famous? Why, she was a natural. People fell in love with her. She managed to wrangle up a following all on her own. She ended up about as famous and high-runged as your average VP, which rubbed a lot of Byzantines the wrong way. Actors ain't supposed to get preferential treatment. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. I thought you worked for Slug, not Rizzo's. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice, mutually beneficial event. But the murder's gone and ruined that. Along with nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. 
Great, thanks. I'll see you later. It did it say marksman? It did. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Just look around real quick. Oops. I don't know how these things appeared in my pocket. I have no clue. Booklets. Just not open. Okay, I can't jump that high. Game is not giving me a hint. Do you have any idea how many bits I spent at the Grand Color? Weapons parts. Repair those. Oops. Okay, let's go. I don't think this is the correct elevator. Do these doors open? Nope. Sealed. These are the correct doors. Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. Thank you. I'm just stealing these cigarettes. Even though I don't smoke. And the whisk. Hey! I saw that! What no. do you think you're doing? I was just leaving. Just keep your fingers to your own self, okay? Okay. I didn't realize that was gonna... Oops. I feel like I'm spending a fortune just standing here. Thank you. Maybe I'll be a little bit more careful.
Sorry, one moment. You know, for a monument to the wealth of the elite built on the backs of the working class, it's real pretty. I guess. I guess. Sure. I'll bet you ten bits this is all just some sort of publicity stunt. That is a terrible fountain. Hi. The crime scene's awaiting, Inspector. I can't believe something like this could happen in my hotel. When I found her, I was just hoping she had a little too much to drink, but all the grievous bodily injury adds up, I suppose. She was lying in a pool of blood, and your first thought was, I wonder if she's drunk. Hey, Byzantines and restraint aren't two words that often go together. Wouldn't be the first blood-soaked, unconscious party door I've come across. Anyway, I'm sure you've got questions. Uh, did you see Helen on, on the day of her death? Of course I did. I just told you I found the body. Oh, wait. Uh, you mean when she was still breathing? Yeah. Um, uh, no, no, of course I didn't. Plus, it's untoward for an employee to speculate about the actions of a hotel guest. Not that I saw any hotel guests interacting with her. I think we both know that you're itching to gossip. Honestly, you're more than a little right. <laughs> I've been burning at the britches to share my theories. The day of her death, I saw Helen leave the hotel premises of the profit of profitability. And didn't see her come back. A little on the suspicious side, I think. Seemed especially strange, seeing how, as far as... I was aware the two didn't get on. What's the deal with the profit of profitability? She against? Uh, yep. Gives seminars on increasing profit margins and the like. Can't say much else, seeing how I ain't in the gossip market. Why didn't Helen and the profit get along? As far as I can recall, Helen dismissed the ladies' seminars in some kind of interview. Said her co-star used them, but she didn't. The top rungers are always ready to read between the lines of famous folks and seem to think the prophet was on her way out. Woman lost a ton of bits and is set to lose more. Back to my other questions. I hope all that helped. I'd like to be as useful as I can in the investigation. Just didn't want to steer anyone the wrong way. Uh, you want to give me more detail on how you came across the body? Sure, I'd take in the check in the barroom every few hours prior to the unveiling. Just to make sure no sprats had snuck into the place. Oh, the sprats are so cute, though. Found her right before I was set to head back to my room in the lower levels for my mandated five-hour sleep period. Tell Fine. ya, thank the law for caffeinoid. Been too upset to get a wink of sleep since. And hey... Now I can finally see smells. He said sleep. I yawned. Did you kill Helen? You can tell me if you did. It'll be our secret. What? No! Just because I found the corpse doesn't mean I made her a corpse. I was in shift all day. Besides, I loved Helen cereals. Well, the old ones anyway. The newer episodes are hot junk on a warm day. <clears throat> Any idea why Helen would have been in the ballroom after hours? Beats all hell out of me. Maybe she was, uh, practicing for the unveiling? Back to my other question. Sure. What's on your mind? Got any idea who might have wanted to do Helen in? Everyone's got theories. 
I don't reckon mine hold much more weight than anyone else's. Okay. Thank you. Black hole birdies disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be inconsolable. I could never work for Slug. They're not recognized by the board. May I go past? Inspector, hope you catch that killer soon. What, you call me Inspector, so I guess that's a yes. Oh, thank the law. Hi? Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. Oh, I love you too. Um, Constable Keene, nice to meet you. We spoke over the ether wave. Constable Maria Keene, it's good to meet you in person, Inspector. Dr. Goodnight. Ecstatic to make your various acquaintances and so on. Are we finished with the pleasantries? There's something I'm excited to show you. I'm guessing you're talking about the body. What body? Oh, that. Goodness, no. This is far more interesting than Halcyon Helen's rapidly I might have orb. a sneeze coming. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hand. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. Oh, dang it. I, I, I wanted to. Mm. Okay. I can't exit the conversation. Science 65. I'm so glad you asked. Allow me to explain. The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. Got it. Thanks. Go on then. Give it a try. Just treat the amplifier as you would a weapon. Hold it good and steady, and look down scope. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into Bend. the amplifier and examine the crime scene. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. Equip it into a weapon slot. Sure. It's almost as if I was about to do that anyway. Let's get rid of... Hunting rifle. Put that in there. Uh, uh. I Oh, this is the save where I redesign the shit out of my skills. Right. Okay, let's add just a little here. There. Why am I negative farsighted? Okay. And maybe go up to twenty five here and persuade is high. I needed that for something else. Oh, after fifty, I can specialize, right? Um. Hack needed to be 65 t for the thing in there. And long guns needed to be... And science. Let's science some more. Uh... 
Okay. We'll ponder this more later. Um, okay, there are footprints. The dis this unit has detected a discrepancy related to Trophy Halcyon Island, no longer unscheduled cool expiration of begin amplification. Um... I see you've been designed with a modular analytical system. What else can you do? The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. Thank you. Let's get started. Tell me about this discrepancy you found. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the grand ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Um, discrepancy amplified. Do the size of these footprints match anything you have on record? Footprint is a tailor-made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. Can you analyze the dirt? The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. I'm grass, so happy I didn't taste it. and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonio. So Helen must have been at the orchards before she died. This deduction appears sound. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. Level 34. Nice. the unreleased Rizzo's product. Rizzo's Spectrum Brown has not yet been released for consumption. Spectrum Brown was scheduled to be unveiled at the Eridano's Atmosphere Complex in partnership with Halcyon Helen. Hmm. Make a note of this for later. This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved complement. Splendid work, Inspector. Okay, so I still need to up my perception a little, I think. Because I still had clues I couldn't decipher. Oh. 
Okay, fine. I shall walk around. Okay, no one saw that, no one got angry. Uh, introduction, uh, draft three, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Are these really all the clues in here? Did I miss something? Well, I am still curious about this as well. Okay, these are doors outside. Hmm. The Purpleberry Orchard. And the footprints. Inspector, that was absolutely marvelous. Beautifully deduced. With the help of my discrepancy amplifier, of course. I'd like a word with you. Ah, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course. I'm only too eager to cooperate. Tell me about the book. Actually, we haven't been introduced yet. Please to make your acquaintance, Doctor. My goodness! I must have died and ascended to the architect's plane. I never imagined I'd meet someone courteous and well-mannered in this hotel. I'd be Can more than happy it? to banter with you after I finish my autopsy. Until then, shall we talk about the body? Give me... Sure, what have you got for me? Actually, that's kind of personal, Doc. I barely know you. The corpse, Inspector. Concentrate, please. You did Our just call me Curtis. up someone. Her wounds from cranium to metatarsal are as follows. A blow to the head, severe enough to lacerate the flesh. Followed by a suite of plasma burns down the neck and back. Signs of poisoning, evidence of inanition and desiccation, possible signs of jaundice, some shingles, one malformed toenail. Jaundice. So she didn't eat enough vegetables. Let's stick to the most likely cause of death. That's good advice. I'll just strike out malformed toenail as a possible cause of death. The short version is this. Helen was killed by poison, a blow to the head, and a plasma weapon. Possibly more. I'll bear that in mind. There's one other thing. I am, of course, at your service. About this discrepancy amplifier. Oh, good. One of my favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Uh, the amplifier seems pretty powerful. Why are you trusting me with it? Because you're the inspector. I should think that's rather obvious. Yes, but why not use it yourself? I invented the discrepancy amplifier to assist me in my own medical work. When you were hired to investigate Helen's death, I realized I had my own part to play. I programmed the amplifier to assist you. I'm entrusting it to your care. Because I want to see my invention help a brilliant inspector solve the murder of the century. And you want to be known as the inventor who helped solve Helen's murder. You don't miss a thing, do you, inspector? I can see why the constable recommended hiring you. Think of the amplifier as my gift to you. May it avail you in the swift and efficient prosecution of justice. What made you invent the amplifier? I didn't expect an existentialist question so early today. It's a neat. It's 7.50 p.m. Just rats feel they must breed, or canids feel they must brutally maul each other. I feel the need to create. Alright, if you say so. I do. 
Hope the amplifier remains useful to you. What happens if I break it or lose it or something? I still have the blueprint and several extra prototypes floating around, but I might recommend you try to be careful with it. Some of the amplifier's internal components are rare, shall we say, and I don't have an indefinite supply. <gasps> but are they legal? You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. I'd like to know a little more about you. Oh, why I'm flattered, Inspector. Mm -hmm. Let me think. I've worked at the Grand Colonial for about as long as it's been around. Prior to that, I lived in Byzantium, but I always felt like it was missing something. And that something turned out to be corpses. <laughs> Byzantium has much in the way of luxury, but examining the dead does not rank amongst the preferred activities of the elite. It sounds like you enjoy being a coroner. Absolutely. Usually I'm just a medical practitioner, so I almost never get to deal with anything as unique, or as quiet, as a corpse. The most interesting thing I saw prior to this was the back of Mr. Woolrich's throat after he blew out his vocal cords, shouting at an attendant. If I weren't here, I'd be back in my quarters, rewatching Byzantium in the spring, or working on my automatic sprat peeler. Automatic sprat peeler. Speaking of inventions, I'm curi curious about this discrepancy amplifier. I, I don't think we'll get new options oh, there, but... One of my sure. favorite subjects. Ask away, my dear. Ask away. Never mind. You sure you don't want to know anything else? Oh, all right. We can change the subject. Thanks for the talk. I'll see you later. If you know what I mean. I think she knows what I mean. Hello. Something I should know? I'd like to ask you some questions, Constable. Are you asking me these questions in an official capacity? Strictly official. I'm here to solve a murder. I'm encouraged to know you're taking this job seriously. Yes. Please, ask Very your serious. questions. Who found the body? Norval, head bellhop. He was understandably distraught. I believe his feelings were genuine. He's a remarkably poor actor. Hotel security corroborates his whereabouts during the murder. I haven't included him in my list of suspects, but... Neither am I convinced of his innocence. What makes you say that? I'm a little suspicious of anyone who enjoys his job as much as Norval. He's also obsessive in his appreciation of Helen's work. Obsessive passion can lead to irrational behavior. It's a fact of modern science. I don't see a sign of the murder weapon. Is it in custody? There's no sign of the murder weapon. Whatever it was that killed Helen, the killer took it with them. Frankly, I'm having trouble imagining exactly what it was that killed her. Any signs of a struggle? Is Helen armed? Helen was known to carry her signature weapon, a bespoke handgun known as the Needler. There was no sign of any such weapon on her body. The Needler's real? I watched her use that thing in the gunfight at the end of Terror on Monarch. You keep excitable company. I hope they won't complicate your investigation by touching things. Don't worry about Felix. No sign of a weapon, then. What about witnesses? If there were any witnesses, none came forward. Ballroom cameras were also offline at the time of the murder. Helen was very particular about having cameras on her. Security footage would have constituted documentary filmmaking. Can't afford that. Do you have any suspects? Spencer Woolrich and Bertie Holcomb are officially persons of interest in this investigation. I've mostly ruled out Mr. Woolrich, leaving Bertie Holcomb as my lead suspect. Let me rephrase that. He's your lead suspect. I've been instructed to turn this case over to your capable hands, while I continue to serve as a consultant. You sound a little relieved. Work is simple. People are complicated. The people involved in this murder are especially complicated. 
Mr. Woolrich was Halcyon Helen's professional rival. It's possible jealousy drove him to take Helen out of the picture. I apologize for the wordplay. Conversely, Mr. Bertie Holcomb was Helen's paramour. The relationship was reportedly dissolved. I can't rule out her murder as a crime of passion. Bertie and Helen were dating, but that doesn't make him a suspect. Mr. Holcomb was in a romantic relationship with Helen. This alone is not enough to make him a lead suspect, but he does play tossball. Black Hole Birdie currently holds the record for most non-consecutive blows to the head. His tendency toward irrational and violent behavior is well documented. I am going to go grab a uh, shirt, uh, a cardigan, and uh, this is blue, but that's not going to work. And hopefully that will keep me from yawning as much. I mean, I am tired. I, for some un unknown reason, I decided that I was done sleeping at 4 a.m. Well, my body decided. My brain would have liked to sleep like another six hours. But I'd already slept like seven, so yeah. My, my body won. Um, so I'm a little tired now. You mentioned ruling out Spencer Woodridge at Woolridge as a possible suspect. Hi, Ash. thinks of himself as a serious and distinguished actor. He was frequently cast in demeaning roles, while Helen played the charismatic heroine. He has reason to be envious. I considered the possibility that Woolrich killed Helen in order to eliminate a rival and advance his own career. But my reasoning collapsed under closer scrutiny. Woolrich owes his career to Helen's dramas. Her death likely harms his long-term prospects. I'm struggling to determine a motivation for him, so I've largely ruled him out. I'd like to talk about something else. Please, ask your questions. That's all for now. Anything else? If we're going to be working together, I'd like to get to know you better. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm afraid I must decline. It isn't personal, Inspector. I'm just on duty right now. Talk to me later, after you've met with Administrator Ludovico. I'll make time to chat. Nothing that thanks. Okay, so the surveillance cameras were off. Off. That's the wrong button. We, we have a uh, device, we were given a device, locked, okay. Can I, all she's carrying is money. And then the broken bottle of booze. Yeah, let's go back up and double check up here. No? No? Hmm. <sighs> but you slept. 4 a.m. is less than ideal. Wakey time. Okay. I knew I should have gotten her autograph when I had the chance. Look at these people, gawking over Helen's corpse. A bunch of parasites. This is pretty. How awful! I left my paper jacket in there.
finally checked in, I see. I hope you're fond of the penthouse. It's pretty much the best seat in the whole hotel. You shouldn't want for any amenity you might find elsewhere. You should act as a better headquarters for the investigation than any space dust covered ship. That and you ain't got room service on a ship. If you ever need anything, come find me. Even if you don't, you can still swing by. I'm always happy to chat. Mind if I ask you a few questions about the crime scene? Please do. Oh, never mind. They're the same as before. Uh, okay. I am going. You should try to solve the puzzle hedges in the orchards. The puzzle is supposed to be something valuable. Here. Hello. Oh, that's not the talk button. I'm sorry, ma'am, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspe- Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Warn you? Right. You happen to have my room key? Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the was elevator in the lobby and our highly okay. skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer. I need access to the VIP guest. I'd love to, Inspector, but I don't really have the authority. Moreover, the guests were promised exclusivity. If I let you up there, I'll never hear the end of it. The only guest who'd have a problem with me being up there would be the murderer. Hmm, that's a good point. If they give me guff, I can just tell them that they're obstructing justice. That has a nice ring to it. Let me just set you up with VIP guest floor access. Done. You can now come and go as you please. More ha 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 ha. <clears throat> the Grand Colonial sure is interested. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. What does the penthouse have to offer? Since we're staying there. Twice the size of the next biggest room, and kit it out with any amenity you want, as well as many that you won't. Best to enjoy it while you can, Inspector. Typically, the only people who can afford the penthouse suite have enough bits to suffocate everyone on Terra 2. Also, please inform me if Woolridge gives you a hard time about getting a better room than his. Don't tell him I said this, but everyone on staff wants to strangle him. Is there anything special about the upper levels? Most certainly. All the important folks can be found in the utmost parts of the hotel. You can hardly walk three feet without bumping into a tossball grate or a bored exec. Though maybe don't bump into them. Could be harmful to your health. No one seems to talk much about the lower levels of the hotel. Who would be interested in a staff-only area? Most folks never ask about the sewers beneath Arizo's plant, either. You can't honestly tell me there's nothing of interest in an entire half of the hotel. Of interest to your investigation? Well, I suppose there is that one door we're not supposed to open. But I'm sorry, Inspector, I'm not authorized to grant you access to any staff sections of the hotel. You'll have to find a way in on your own. Can't we do the obstruction of justice thing again? Oh, if you're no sure. Ah, you've got some high profile guests here, right? What can you tell me about them? My apologies, Inspector, but that would be a severe violation of guest privacy. We here at the Grand Colonial firmly believe that... All right, my supervisor just walked out of earshot. Some <clears throat> folks just don't understand the importance of gossip. About whom? And what would you wish to know? 
Did you notice anything about Halcyon Helen before she died? You know, out of everyone here, I probably knew the least about Helen. I'm not much of an Aether Wave watcher myself. And Helen always had a crowd of admirers chasing her, you see? So she rarely stopped to chat. Friendly enough, surely, but always seemed untouchable. Emphasis on scene. Did you ever see Helen acting strangely? Hmm. Now that you mention it, she was usually calm and collected, but every so often I'd see her looking all wild-eyed and intense. It seemed as if she was determined about something. Or maybe she was just hungry? That woman ordered a lot of food. Maybe show business gives you a faster metabolism. She was very pretty. I wonder who motion captured her. Heard Black Hole Birdie was staying here. Ah, Birdie. Is he bigger than he is dumb, or dumber than he is big? I have a bet with a friend. Not sure we'll ever get it to pay out. Birdie used to be Helen's beau, though he isn't anymore, and not just because she's dead. If I had a million bits, I'd spend every one just to learn what caused their split. We've got some kind of productivity guru, right? What's her deal? Her deal? Not making them. <clears throat> I'd laugh at my own comment, but everyone knows there's no bigger joke than the prophet of profitability herself. Didn't you hear Helen's interview? That woman is the definition of humbuggery. Anyone who gives her the time of day is a right fool. I mean, Spencer Woolrich has taken several of her productivity seminars and look where it got him. Don't waste your time. And Helen's co-star, Woolrich. He have any reason to want her dead? If looks could kill, he'd have put her in the ground ten times over. Man's clearly jealous of her success compared to his. See, I bet we're the only two people thinking about him in all of Eridanos. And I only am because you mentioned his name. If you leave woolly cow milk out, it turns to curds. Leave the curds out, they begin to get stale, then rot. Woolridge is on his way to the trash bin, and everyone knows it. Either he's in denial, or he knew Helen would be checking out soon, judging by his increasing demands for a room upgrade. I think that's all the gossip I need right now. That's a shame, Inspector. What if I wanted to know a little about you? Wow. Um... Hmm. I'm a freelance captain, changing the colony one high-stakes encounter at a time. Mm. A dashing gunslinger type, then. I'm sure the investigation will turn out splendidly in your hands. Or at least, Mr. Kincannon seems confident enough to believe so. Thank you. Wow. See you later. Um... Hmm. Okay, where am I going now? Oh, the elevator? Right. Right. to the penthouse suite. Next stop, the finest seat in the house. This is the murder victim, by the way. Um, and I'm not loving the alien in the vodka. Oh, my entire crew is here. Nice. Really, guys? Guys, this is the common room. Does not mean that you get to act like commoners, though. Come on. 
We have multiple. Who is not wearing pants? Everyone should be wearing pants. I mean, we, we had discussions about my lack of preference for dark chocolate, but I'm still gonna s steal it. Everything that isn't boarded down. Nailed down. Oh, we have a proper... Oh. Hmm. Examine board more closely. Blank notebook lies open beside a stack of clean papers. It looks like someone intended to write something, but never got started. Okay. Hi. So this is what a clean room smells like. A clean room does not smell, but yes. <sighs> I was hoping we'd have windows. Not pine. The people who clean my, uh, the stair- Really? Pipeline discrepancy detected nearby. The imprint left inside this suitcase matches the silhouette of- Halcyon Helen's iconic handgun, the Needler. The weapon was recently removed. The people who clean my stairwell uses... Helen, where did we go wrong? Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. That didn't mean for... <laughs> Okay, I'm actually gonna finish this time. The people who clean my stairwell uses something semi-piney and the doors uh, don't keep smell out well enough. Why would you have algae lager in the shower? Um, so I am not fond of the stairwell cleaning day. Okay, I should increase my perception still. No, wait. What was it I needed? Actually, let's not do any of that. Hack. Do I need more hack? R. Bellamy. Who's R. Bellamy? Ruth. Huh. Wait, there's no outbox? Fine.
That wasn't super revelatory. The number of cigarettes here indicate that the smoker's lifespan has been shortened by approximately 11.2 years. Okay, so I have two quests, right? Three. Search Birdie's room. Um, speak to Mr. And track down her. Okay. Well, I guess we shall start with this. Inspector. I understand you've visited the scene of the crime. Yes, Halcyon sir. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. You mean Ruth Bellamy? Halcyon Helen was just a character. Halcyon Helen was more than a character. She was a brand. Her death will now be associated with Rizzo's Spectrum Brown. You understand why that worries me. I get it. You don't want to be responsible for a drink that kills people. I do not. Spacer's choice has that market cornered. Back to the matter at hand. Tell me about your investigation. I've got a lead. I can't tell you why, but I need access to the orchards. Your discretion is appreciated. I admit, I'm beginning to feel more confident in this arrangement. Here, okay. I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. <laughs> there is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly both. So he locks his doors the moment an investigator arrives. That's not suspicious at all. I agree with the sentiment behind your snide remark. Unfortunately, the Piraeus spaceport is Cedric's purview, not mine. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. I'm only yawning somewhat. Um. Okay, it's gonna turn blue. Everything's fine. I'm just going to save. Um, just in case. No. I don't need to talk to him again right now. Still here. So. Okay, let's go find her boyfriend. Hi there, Inspector. It might be a little beyond my job description to ask, but at my heart, I'm still a bellhop. Was the sweet to your liking? Um. I didn't even know they made hotel rooms that large. It was great. Good. I'm glad. Now, I'd love to bring you to a floor of your choosing. Um, I'd like to visit the VIP guest floor. If you see Black Hole Birdie, be sure to get an autograph for me. Oh, just joking. I've already got one. 
Uh, let's keep going with Ellie and Yoka. Felix and Yoka, I mean. Just a warning, I might be dumb due to being tired. It's happened before. It'll happen again. Sorry. I'm not yawning, you're yawning. Really? Initiating banter protocol. Now simulating familiar and welcoming demeanor. Burbage 3001 is trained to recognize all board approved actors. Greetings, fellow star. Your performance in Maverick Johnston's latest drama was memorable. Get away from me, you monster! Burbage 3001 is impressed by your performance. My I, I, that, I, I didn't have that quite as well. As your employer Close. considered transferring you to your company's entertainment department, banter protocol exhausted, reverting to default behavior, grieving and despair. Oh, Halcyon Helen. May your atoms be commended to the Aether. Determination 45, take a deep breath. <sighs> Everything's fine, the machine's not about to murder me. All Burbage 3001 units have our hostility protocol disabled by default. This unit is only capable oh. of slaying an <clears throat> audience. Okay, happy? You knew Halcyon Helen? Burbage 3001 was designed to disrupt Halcyon Helen's monopoly over the Aetherwave serial market. This unit's programming is based on Helen's most famous roles, Burbage 3001. Anything Halcyon Helen can do, this unit can do slightly worse. So I have a monster in my fridge, but it's 8.30 almost. I don't want to drink a monster now because I do want to actually sleep at some point. It almost sounds like you've got a motive for killing Helen. Now running shock and dismay protocol. What's this? Helen's death was the murder? How horrifying. Bring that killer to justice, designated authority figure. This unit has not yet completed its grief cycles. Randomizing despair tables. Oh, Helen. Is there no justice in the world? <clears throat> I'm leaving. Okay, so engineering four to five. Uh, where is engineering? Oh, one. I needed one. Fine, you get one. Why? Yes. This unit has not yet completed its grief cycles. Randomizing this <laughs> tables. Oh, A monster Helen, energy drink, is yes. There no justice <laughs> in the world. 
I see you've had some work done. Who upgraded you? The Bench 3001's programming is frequently upgraded to adhere to board certified standards. The most recent upgrade was performed by Spencer Woolrich. This unit has not yet completed its grief cycles, randomizing despair tables. Oh. Helen, is there no justice in I also world? have mojito, margarita, um, 12 little sours, uh, two, three bottles of sake that you gave me, um, and a whole bunch of more alcohol. I, I think I even have a bottle of Corona there. The non-deadly one. This is less than ideal. Wait, what did that say? I'm gonna just steal this. Ooh! wonder if that hat's better than mine. So I guess this isn't flood? Maybe? I did nothing. It just popped open on so Well, I only need one of those hats. Oh, can I hack this computer? Nope, the computer isn't on. Wait, hang on. Uh. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Chemical analysis complete. This unit has detected the following substances. Oil, terroray, blood, terroray, unidentifiable biological fluids, terroray. Um, you know anything about the terroray biology, Nayoka? A lot of folk use their blood for seasoning on account of its sweetness. Don't try and use its innards, though. Only thing that can digest taro meat is a raptodon. That definitely sounds toxic. These substances cause extreme gastrointestinal distress in humans. Large doses can be fatal. This bottle contained Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka. The presence of terroray biological fluids may have significantly improved its flavor. Let's move on. There's a sort of mint on his pillow. I'm not gonna do that. About no. time you arrived. I see you haven't dressed the way I asked you to, but I suppose that was expecting too much of a non-industry lot. I look Expect fucking fantabulous, so I'll have you know. Unless you'd like to waste more of my time, I suggest we begin rehearsing. Oh. Ready? <coughs> You've fallen right into my trap, Captain. Oh, don't bother to fight back. 
You cannot hope to stop me from installing philosophism as the system's reigning ideology. I'm not who you think I am. You, you, you wouldn't harm an old man at the end of his wits, would you? Uh, I'm confused, disoriented. I may have even soiled myself. Wait, if you're armed, that must mean you're not with the hotel staff. Oh, no, this is curious indeed. Who are you? And how did you get in here? I'm here to investigate the murder of a Halcyon Helen. I'd like to ask a few questions. You're here to investigate me. Oh, I assure you, I'm nothing special. Just an old crook with more money than time. That was a quote from the retiree's revenge, in which I played an ex-thief turned decrepit old man. But uh, of course, I'm certain you already recognized it. Now, what shall I sign first? Your weapon, your wallet, or perhaps something... Uh, a little more personal? Undergarment Ew. signatures have been popular of late, or so I've heard. Ew, no, you get nowhere near my undies. Um, I mean, I, I... You can sign my weapon if you want. I'd be delighted. Oh, damn. My pen's out of ink. I'll just get you a portrait of my face as a souvenir. I'm sure I have the prints around here somewhere. Uh, by the by, how did you get in here? The only non-staff individual cleared to enter guest rooms is supposed to be the inspector for Bellamy's murder. Oh. Uh, oh! Uh, <clears throat> hello. Hello. <clears throat> uh, Hi. Uh, terribly sorry, Inspector. I didn't realize it was you. Uh, I understand that I am beyond willing to comply with your search for the fiend that did Bellamy in. You know, now that I look at you, <laughs> you're the perfect reflection of me. Uh, back when I starred in the Marauder's Pain, the absolute picture of justice. Ask me anything at all. I might even give you a straight answer. <sighs> I've learned a thing or two about your activities in the hotel. Oh, have you now? Please do go on. Uh, uh, don't leave me in suspense. I spoke to Burbage. He told me you upgraded him. I did indeed. With Halcyon Helen parading her fame about, I was left without an acting partner. Burbage is no exception. His acting protocols <laughs> were nothing short of a joke. So, I decided to make some modifications. Installing him with some of my old serial quotes has, I think, improved his range. The way he bungled about with that weapon of his hardly befitted a dissident, so I modified it as well. He's much quicker on the draw now, though he's still a machine. There's a supernatural quote in that last message somewhere, but I can't quite figure it out. I've got my eyes on you. I'm quite used to being breathlessly watched. Oh, I am perfectly capable of breathing still, dude. I'd like to ask you about the murder. Certainly. But one quick question before we begin, if I may. How was it that Bellamy met her end? Why are you so curious? Why, I'm merely worried for my own sake. Perhaps whoever came after her could come after me next. But if you don't want to tell me, I understand. Whatever happened, I hope poor Bellamy didn't suffer. I think she did. In case you missed it, Ash, I think you might have missed it. She was poisoned. She was shot with a plasma gun. 
Uh, she had a hangnail. Not an ingrown toenail. And something else. I, I don't quite remember. It was a lot. Poisoned. Did I say poisoned? I, th I think I said poisoned. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm tired, okay? What were you up to at the time of the murder? I was meditating, of course. That's how I get into character. Got anybody who can corroborate that? Respectfully, Inspector. It is rather counterproductive to commune with others while meditating. Oh, I'm sorry, you were here still? Um, okay, back to my other questions. I'll answer whatever you wish. Are those colored contacts? Did you know Helen well? Bellamy has been my co-star throughout the autumn of my career. I should like to think I knew her. In fact, I cannot name a single role in the last ten years that did not involve her in some way. Unless you count the uncredited silent shopkeep on Melissa's meteoroids. Do you consider yourself a friend of hers? I'll ask you this. If you'd been the star of cinema for years, then suddenly found yourself scrounging for bit parts while a younger person stole the limelight, how would you feel? In short, the two of us weren't close. But that's not to say my dislike of her was so extreme that I tried to do anything drastic. Resenting Bellamy is one thing, but killing her is another completely. It's also beneath me. I mean, I gotta say, I, I'm not enacting myself, but some roles can't just be gender swapped. That's just not, not how, like, fiction works. So saying that, oh, a younger person showed up and stole all my roles, that... No. 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 <sighs> Alright. Speaking theoretically, how would you have killed the victim? Oh, come now, Inspector. What do you take me for? I'm an old man. I neither have the time nor the willpower to kill people for fun. Besides, I have my reputation to think of. Okay. Back to my other questions, or the end I of the dialogue. I suppose that is enough on that grim subject. Who are you, exactly? I'm sure you're joking. Perhaps I'm not in my prime, but you've no doubt seen the name Spencer Woolrich. On many a serial advertisement throughout your travels. I mean, there are a lot of things that can be gender swapped, but there there are some things that where it just doesn't work. Like if you, you can gender swap a whole thing. But you can't just gender swap a single character in a thing. But you you could gender swap Romeo and Juliet. Which is like the most famous thing anyone ever uses as example. But you can't gender swap like Greek mythology. Zeus can't be a woman. Because Zeus is the dad of everyone because he's he just can't keep it in his pants that is just not it, it would be very strange for for Zeus to suddenly be female with ev with everything that comes with being a parent when you are a biological woman sure you're a god but I mean 
yeah, well, welcome to my brain. Um, oh, sure, you are that guy in that one serial. Come now, I'm sure I would have made more of an impression than that. Could I have really fallen so far behind the time? Did you ever see me in the masked marketeer? Uh, the busker of Byzantium? Uh, what about episodes 13 and 190 of Princess of Hephaestus? And who could forget from Halcyon with love? I was great in that movie. Even if I was starring beside a two-ton bucket of bolts and a woman with no talent. Busker of Byzantium. Helen wrote a B to implicate her killer before she died. I think that's a bit of a stretch, don't you? If you're going to come after me, I expect evidence. Unless you want to be smacked with litigation. Smacked! Goodbye. If you're gonna threaten me, we are done here. Done, I tell you. Done. No. I'm going. That's me still trying to figure out the buttons. Let's just close this as well. Okay. Off I go. No, but I. Okay. Sure, fine. On my way. Uh -huh. What the fuck is with everyone in this place? Who are you? Are you the boyfriend? Like Jason Bamoa thing going on. We're all seeing that woolly cap. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Multiple discrepancies detected. First discrepancy. A woolly cow is present in this hotel room. Woolly cows are an import species for the wilderness exploitation reserve and are incapable of affording upper class accommodations. Second discrepancy. This woolly cow is dangerously inebriated with Rizzo Spectrum Vodka. Alcohol sanguinization ratio exceeds recommended maximum. Hmm, there's some worrying discoloration in its eyes. An accurate observation, Inspector. This woolly cow is suffering from symptoms consistent with a hangover. A brief survey of this area reveals that the most recent occupants were athletes belonging to the Rizzo's Rangers Tossball Club. Was Black Hole Birdie here? Insufficient data. A brief survey of localized property damage divided by the area of this room yields the following estimate. This unit was likely occupied by every member of the Rizzo's Rangers. Minus one. Okay, well that's steel. That is potentially literal bullshit. Those are also steel. Fall plaid collection. Hat, wide brimmed. This toss ball signed by Birdie Blackhole Holcomb was presented to Dr. Margrave 
on a special guest episode of Space Hospital to thank him for removing a tossball stick embedded in his head. Okay. I'm not stealing the mineral water. Ah, poor cow. What did you find? Where did you find? Oh. A single footprint, size ten, tossball cleat sized. Amplifier, analyze the footprint for any residue. The soil in this residue contains a very high concentration of oxygen. High concentration oxygen usually points to a terraformer. Well done, Inspector. The weather monitoring station at the pilot house substitutes for a terraformer. The soil in his footprint likely came from there. This isn't enough of a lead. Best keep looking around. Cold. Any idea when this happened? Ah. Okay, remind me to increase perception more. Someone burned this letter shortly after Halcyon Helen's death. Amplifier, can you identify what was on the letter? Unfortunately, most of the writing is beyond recovery. The words station, meeting point, and emergency are all that can be discerned. Well, glad we narrowed that down. Clues I found point me to the Phaeton pilot, house, pilot House's weather monitoring station. Okay, increased perception. Wait. What's, which one's perception? It's a perk? Set attributes. Well, I should probably... Did everyone reset? Okay, well, set attribute.
Oh, so caffeine would be one. Okay. Gotcha. And this one. I dropped off a whole bunch of my um, these earlier. Okay, well. can't enter there. Actually, let's... Yes, sell. Sell junk. No, this, yes. We are not drinking that. We might drink some milk. And no, 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 no. No, 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 yes, yes, and no, okay, okay, so talk to whoever this dude is, actually, let's Oops. Press the wrong button for a moment. Scan the room. Real quick. Okay, hi. How are you doing? Zeke Hannigan, Rizzo's Ranger 16th back. Pleased to meet you. What can I do for you? I had some questions about Halcyon Helen's murder. Oh, you must be that inspector people have been talking about. It's a damn shame about Miss Helen. She was always real good to me and the rest of the Rangers. Bertie's taking it pretty hard. Miss Helen was the love of his life. So, what did you want to know? Where were you at the time of the murder? I'm ashamed to admit it, but... Me and a couple of the other rangers spend the night in Constable Keen's cells down at the spaceport. We didn't do anything serious, just a bit of pranks and vandalism. It's what usually happens when we all get to drinking. Guess Constable Keen saw things a bit differently and had us hauled off. Was Birdie in jail with the rest of you? No, we lost him somewhere along the way. Or maybe he managed to get away? I can't rightly remember. But he was definitely not sharing a cell with us. That much I know. Tell me about Bertie and Helen. Oh, Bertie was mad about Helen. He was certifiable. The big galoot loved Helen about as much as he loved the game. Trouble is, Bertie was not blessed with an abundance of temper. Helen kept Bertie steady. If he lost his temper around her, it'd be because something broke between the two of them. Do you think he could have killed Helen? What? Law, no. Bertie's got a fierce temper, but there's no way he'd ever have laid a finger on Miss Helen. 
Can you think of anyone who would have wanted to kill Helm? Miss Helen was outspoken. She made her share of enemies on account of her expressing herself. Just between you and me, I heard rumors the Prophet never much cared for Helen's brand of blood honesty. Thank you. Let's talk about something. What can else. I do for you? Uh, would you happen to know why there's a woolly cow in one of the rooms? Uh, we sort of borrowed her from the Wilderness Exploitation Reserve while we were drunk. I have no idea how we managed to sneak her in here without being spotted. Don't worry, we'll return her safe and sound. Mostly sound. Hungover is still sound, right? Please do not feed animals alcohol. That, that's just bad form. What brings the rangers to Eridanos? Since it's the off-season, we're helping support the launch of Rizzo Spectrum Brown. Meet the fans, sign tossball cards, that sort of thing. How about you, fella? You after a signature? Nah, I think I'll pass. He's just being coy. Anyway, where was I? Just between you and me, Rizzles ought to cancel the whole event out of respect for Miss Helen. You're right where you didn't notice me yawning yet again. How long have you been with the Rangers? About half my life. You know I was named third most profitable investment on two non-consecutive seasons? Ain't a lot of players who can make that claim. Except for the guys who came in first and second, I guess. I spent the last season injured and almost got sold to the Hephaestus Hammers. But now I'm all convalesced. Ready to lay into some Cleo darlings, you know? Really break some legs. Thank you. So, cigarettes. Booze. More cigarettes. Okay. Fine. We shall... Look at our map. Quest. Uh, travel to the meeting spot. Travel to the orchards. Tra track down the profit of profitability. Okay, so first of all, we need to access what floor would you like to visit? the lobby, please. To the lobby we go. No, I, I will, at this point, admit that I might have been yawning. Mr. Kincannon really knows how to run a hotel. The Grand Colonial Front Desk warmly welcomes you, Inspector. It's a pleasure to see you again. How may I be of assistance to you, Inspector? There's a cow. I can always make time for a little back chat. Er, gossip. That's all you required to hear? Meanwhile, I was just starting to enjoy myself. It certainly is a marvel of modern ingenuity, luxury, and ambition. Please, allow me to answer any curiosities you might have about our building and the amenities on offer. If you're sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I wanted to tell her about the cow. Oh. Wait. Did I already read number two? 
pretty sure I can. An industrial grade laxative has been added to the liquor in these bottles. Well, that's not kind. Head of a former Burbage. Okay, this is a doll room. Was there something in there? No. No, no. This? complaints. I think we're done here too. Yes. And yeah. Terribly sorry, but I can't chat just now. Someone on the second VIP level just ordered 15 caned meat pies, and if I don't get to it now, it'll be my head. Okay. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Where? I Oh. Analysis of this stovetop reveals an alarming degree of grease buildup, approximating proximity to volatile gases and chemicals. Chances of an explosive combustion upon next use currently at 92.9%.
like a workplace hazard. How does a slug caught the Searching slug work logs. No work log found. Creating conjecture. Slug has likely not fixed this issue due to a lack of responsibility on the part of their employees. Is this normal? Most corporations have regular cleaning procedures to prevent damage to company property. Slug, already unlike most corporations in a variety of ways, does not. That or the employees tasked with inspecting are shirking their duties. For shame. Okay. Well, we need to talk to that dude. We shall also... not finish that sentence, because why would we? That's another exit. How can a room, pee, room key be painted cardboard? Um, well, we're gonna steal it. I keep forgetting that I don't need to actually exit to, uh, to get rid of that menu. I always do that. Of course the hotel don't give their workers a decent living. Why would they? That'd be, you know, decent. You had anything good for lunch? Um... That is not an ideal bathroom. Ew. Baby, I heard you. I hear you. Hmm. I don't see it. Okay, I am actually getting to that point. I know it's only been two hours, but I'm actually getting to that point where your body is like, no, I am not okay with this anymore. So we are going to cut the stream short. Um, unless I'm super tired, I will give you a bonus stream tomorrow, same time. So two hours and ten minutes ago tomorrow and I'm gonna go crash sleep like a baby hopefully a li li little later than 4 a.m. Um, but thank you for hanging out 
and I'm sorry it was so short and I'll see you probably tomorrow otherwise we continue this on Wednesday.